Hey guys, welcome to the UF Disciple channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of G-Skills SV710 Virtual 7.1 Gaming Headset and their SR910 Real 7.1 Gaming Headset. So let's get started. I want to start off this review by discussing the most disappointing thing about these headsets. The design, the design of how it sits on your head. While G-Skills website makes them look all sexy and desirable with the promotional shots, the truth of the matter is they make you look like a noob. The hard band at the very top with the soft band underneath just gives this odd effect of making your head look way too tall. Definitely a poor aesthetic choice. And I wish that G-Skill would have integrated both, both parts, the hard band and the, the soft band into a single band. Uh, but otherwise, these are pretty nice looking headsets. And regardless of the looks, the soft band is perfectly comfortable for long periods of use. You have the discreet, nicely illuminated G-Skill logo on the outside of either ear cup, leatherette foam ear pads, a nice, mostly hidden from view microphone, and with the SV710, you have the three meter rubber mat USB cable, complete with inline volume controls. The SR910 also has a three meter cable and has inline volume control, but instead of just a volume up and volume down button like the SV710, it includes a dock that controls the microphone's mute function as well as the volume for each of the seven drivers, which you can switch between using this manual transmission button. And the volume wheel also serves as a mute audio button. Also, the ear cups on either headset are complete with height adjust as well as a wide swivel function. And with the SR910, you're able to see all of the drivers in the ear cup on the side. Software wise, the software isn't as buggy as in my other experiences with the RGB peripherals that G-Skill makes. The only complaint that I have is that during install, it doesn't allow you to alter the file path of where you want to install the utility. The utility allows you to control all of the things that you would expect from an audio utility. With the SV710, you can switch between stereo, Dolby, simulated 7.1 surround sound in the utility, as well as adjust the EQ to suit your audio preferences. In fact, G-Scale gives quite a few preset EQs as well as some decent effects. And they also include some weird effects that make it sound like you're on drugs. So yes, this is both a virtual 7.1 headset as well as a virtual acid trip headset. With the SR910 software, you'll find the same EQ customization, but also the ability to switch between stereo, quadraphonic, 5.1 surround, and 7.1 surround listening setup. But again, I do have to criticize G-Skill about the fact that it's necessary to download separate utilities for the headsets that are in the same lineup. I don't know, I, I wish that they would have maybe unified their driver systems a bit. Volume wise, these things are tremendously loud. Here, take a listen to them at full blast with the ear cups turned out. Even at a two setting in Windows, these things are loud enough for me. The audio with the SV710s is actually remarkably decent using the 50mm drivers. The bass isn't too hard hitting, but it is present when you need it, and the mid to high range is sufficient. The SV710s actually provide a decent music listening experience that is on par with most other gaming headsets. Definitely no complaints from me. The virtual 7.1 experience is also pretty decent for playing FPS games to identify where sounds are coming from, and the movie watching experience with movies like Interstellar is pretty good as well. For the SR910 headset, the audio experience is really good for watching movies and playing games where sound identification is helpful. Having separate drivers for each of the channels creates a nice immersive experience in each of these use cases. However, when I switched to a music listening experience, everything sounded pretty distant and less realistic than with the SV710s. However, it does have a really well-defined bass experience for the various music genres that use a heavy bass to drive the tracks. The microphone on either headset is completely retractable and flexible for you to be able to place it in the proper placement in front of your mouth, and it features environmental noise cancellation. However, it is of pretty poor quality. It simply sounds very tinny and distorted. Sufficient for voice chat in most games, but not exceptional for recording any sort of audio. Definitely the weakest point on either of the headsets. Overall, the Ripjaws SV710 headset is pretty much on par with other virtual 7.1 headsets that I've tested. The music listening experience is better than a real 7.1 headset, and the virtual 7.1 surround is good in the limited use cases that it's designed for, and just like other gaming headsets, the microphone's absolute garbage. Pretty par for the course. 
However, I can never justify buying a pair of these. They simply look silly with the firm headband over the top of the soft one. It's just a strange design scheme that I personally don't like, and I'm not sure many other people will like it either. With the SV710s having an anticipated pricing of 1,199 South African Rand, that puts this headset as the direct competitor to the Corsair H1500 headset, which I'll have a review coming out on shortly. And honestly, you get about the same audio quality from either, and it would be hard to choose a clear winner based on functionality. The SV710s have the retractable mic feature, which is good if you don't want it protruding all the time. The H1500 looks a lot better in my opinion. However, regardless of the fact that those two are direct competitors, I would actually recommend you skip both options and spring the extra 200 Rand for the Kingston HyperX Cloud 2 headsets. You get the same audio quality, detachable mic, decent aesthetics, but you also have the ability to make the headset mobile because it has both a USB audio as well as the 3.5mm jack. Coming back to the Ripjaws SP710, I just can't find a place for them in the current headset market. Unlike G-Skill's MX780 mouse and KM780 keyboards, the SP710 just seems to be about as good as the rest of the competition with no unique features besides the peculiar look. Hard to justify recommending these. The Ripjaws SR910, on the other hand, bring a unique experience to the table with seven different drivers controlling the actual 7.1 audio experience. If you need a headset where unique audio location is important to you, such as playing FPS games, then these might be worth a look at, if you can get over the visual discrepancy. However, if you use your headset primarily for listening to music or other various stereo surround things, then these should probably not be considered. And with that, I'd like to give a big thanks to Wootwer for sending the Ripjaws SV710 and SR910 headsets over for review. Wootwer is South Africa's best computer components retailer and the preferred retailer of G-Skill products in South Africa. If you head to their website, you'll find a wide selection of pretty much any computer part that you could want with exceptional pricing, and a customer support team that refuses to let you have a poor experience. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootwear.co.za and woot up your life. So that's it for this video on the G-Skills Ripjaws SV710 and SR910 headset. Like this video if you found it helpful. Dislike it if it was more disappointing than the fact that Oculus still hasn't brought a VR headset to the market, even after being acquired by Facebook a few years ago. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all the tech-related videos that I have that I produce, including some reviews coming out on Corsair's gaming peripherals, and also a review that I have coming out on the PowerColor R9 380X. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.